Hello and welcome to the video review of Transformers CA-03 Causality Thunder Shred. This figure was provided to us the fans by Fans Project. I picked this guy up at tfsource.com and the total for the figure uh, was shipped $59.47. I did pay a little bit extra for shipping and handling so I could get it a little faster. Now, I do have to say one thing. The packaging for this guy from TF Source was fantastic. It came in not only bubble wrap, but this nice, thick, sturdy cardboard sleeve. And the box itself was uh, filled with crushed up, a crinkled up, uh, I guess you would call it brown packing paper. And I was really happy because the figure is, the box is in pristine condition. And I've gotten the, these uh, higher priced items from other retailers that the packaging isn't quite as good. So we are actually going to be getting a look here at the figure proper, or the box I should say. And here we go. Uh, the box itself is a little bit bigger than a deluxe class uh, figure. And it is the nice Decepticon purple with the G1 grid format going on here. And here he is in all his uh, poses and alt mode. Up top it's got some really nice art, uh, the same art that is here on the front of the figure. And on the bottom just a warning, eh, don't eat it. You know, all that certain things. So, getting into the box. And here we have the figure in, or out of the box I should say. Nice little uh, silver on the back there. And on the back of that piece comes the instruction manual and his Thunder Shred card. And here is the figure uh, in the packaging. So we've got the little holder here, a couple of his claws, and then the back of the figure. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him out of the box and we'll take a look at the figure. Here we have Thunder Shred in his robot mode with the completed claws. Now you may notice that the claws are the full claws as opposed to the Wolverine half claws. I'll show you that in a little bit. One thing I do like is you can, these little uh, wrist parts do pop off and you can actually put them forward so that Thunder Shred has a little bit of clearance with his hands. That is a very nice touch and that has to do also with the transformation which we'll talk about in a little bit. The figure itself is a little on the small side. Here is Dark of the Moon Roadbuster compared with the Thunder Shred. Now this doesn't bother me all that much simply because the original um, Insecticons were smaller than the Deluxe Autobots and Decepticons of the G1 era. It is a little small considering the price but I think you'll be surprised at just how awesome this figure is. Now, like I said, I do have a slight mistransformation going on here, uh, partially because I've got the, the legs, there's uh, legs pointing down. They should actually be pointing up and out like this, and those should be pointing down. Overall, the figure looks exquisite. Uh, Fans Project really knows how to make a good looking robot mode, and it really shows here. Posability for this guy is really nice. He's got a, a swivel joint here and then this uh, swivel on the upper shoulder. His arm uh, does rotate here on the upper arm. There is 90 degrees worth of bend here and you've got a lot of options in the arm rotation. Head is on a swivel joint and the head is a very plain design but it works for this figure. There is unfortunately a very, or I'm sorry, there is fortunately a little bit of rotation in the torso. And the legs are on some very, very tight ball joints, or at least mine is. Then the knees bend uh, a lot, uh, quite a bit, and the feet are on ball joints, but they are limited by the bulk of the lower leg. You can get some really nice poses going on with this figure, as we saw when we took a look at the box. For example, here's one nice pose that took me oh, all of 10 seconds to get together. Poses like this are really what, really what make me love fans' projects, simply because you could get them into really, really cool poses, and the figures themselves just look awesome. The next thing I'd like to show you are the options you have with the claws. 
The first option comes with this little uh, handheld piece that we saw earlier. Now this little guy you can have some fun with because you can make a giant shuriken with these, uh, with these blade pieces. You can actually make a slightly smaller one using either those bits or the claw pieces. And this can be held in hand to be thrown. And it is very intimidating with him holding this giant, giant shuriken. I, I honestly don't know how he doesn't clobber himself with it, but it looks very cool. Now, like I said, what you can do is you can pull off the tips of the blades, or the claws, put the claws back, so he looks more like a, a Wolverine type look, and then he can hold a slightly smaller shuriken, as you can see. And also, the shuriken can be stored on the back of the figure. There's a little hole right here, right there above my finger, and there's a little peg right here. So you can just peg that into place, and he looks like he's got a big ninja star on his back, which is a very, very cool touch. Something else you can do with the with these bits is you have to pull you have to pull the claw off with just um, just enough force to get that whole part to come with it, with it, as opposed to doing that. And what you do with these bits are you attach them right here. And what you get is probably the silliest Decepticon ever. I personally don't care for that look. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and disassembled Thunder, Thunder Shred so that we can go ahead and get to the transformation. The first thing we're going to do is reassemble his claws. And they go together very, very quickly, very easily. You don't have to worry about, oh, does this claw go with this piece? No, just kind of make sure, just make sure that everything's pointing on the inside and that's really all you got to worry about. And then we will reattach the claws like so. Now that we have the claws reattached, we're going to go ahead and get with the transformation. To start the transformation, we'll go around to the back of the figure and take that backpack piece, unpeg it, flip it around, and place it over the head of the robot. And that does snap into place, but you do need to be a little bit careful because, as you'll see throughout the transformation, that little piece that we just snapped into place comes off a lot. Then we'll spin the torso around 180 degrees, go down to the feet, and actually just kind of get them so that they swivel out away from the figure. And when you do that, you can turn them around and fold them back in upon themselves. And there's a little peg there that's really hard to see in the video, but it is there and it pegs the foot right into place. And we'll just do that on the other side as well. It does take a little bit to get those uh, feet out of the way, and those joints are very tight. That's a good thing, but just be aware of that. Those joints are really tight. Next, we'll swivel the shoulders all the way back down the back of the figure. That will allow us to swing the arms down. Now, I missed a step here when I was doing this, as I forgot to actually take the hips and the legs and push them down into the bottom of the bug mode. This allows you clearance to fold the arms fully down across the backs of the robot legs. And that's very important for our next step. Next what we'll do is we'll actually rotate the legs over the arms. And this is a lot harder than it sounds. And it's basically because you have to get everything lined up perfectly. If things aren't, as you can see, I'm having trouble. And that's just because I haven't practiced this transformation enough. It, it's really annoying, and it gets in the way of enjoying the figure. But once you've got it, you've got it, and it's not a problem. 
Next, we collapse the backpack up into the bug's body, and there are some tab holes right there that these gray bits snap into. Now, the actual hinges that those gray bits are attached to are very, very tight, and I was really worried that I was going to break them um, when I first transformed them, but they're fine now. Last, and by mo no means least, we'll plug in the mandibles, and those suckers plug in with a nice, satisfying click. And here we have Thunder Shred in bug mode, or insect mode. Now, I haven't gotten quite good enough at the transformation yet to really get it perfect. Uh, as you can see, the this little bit right here is supposed to plug in to the side, but according to the directions, it's these legs are supposed to close up a lot neater than they do. But that's probably just because I'm not that good at the transformation yet. It doesn't look difficult, but getting everything lined up does take some practice, I have found. The bug mode is nice. This is a nice, not shrapnel bug mode. I really like it a lot, and it j just makes me feel all happy, because it really just looks menacing, yet at the same time not. I know that sounds a little weird, but I really, really dig the way this robot mode looks. And as you can see, I haven't gotten quite everything lined up. I'm still playing around with it, and I'm still trying to perfect getting the transformation going. But this guy is a lot of fun. His robot mode is the clear winner, though. The robot mode looks fantastic. And getting him back into robot mode is a lot easier than getting him into insect mode. That's just a personal opinion of mine. I'm really happy that I picked this thing up. Like I said, I got him from a TF source. And you can pick your own up, too, as well. I believe they still have several in stock. But it's a great overall figure. The transformation is simple, but complex enough that you might be swearing a little bit during it because not everything lines up perfectly. Though I do dig it a lot. And like I said, the robot mode is the clear winner. It just looks a lot better. That being said, I think the bug mode is very, very nice. It is a wonderful homage to a classic G1 figure that, when I was a kid, I loved. And just, it it's definitely a buy. I really recommend picking this guy up. It doesn't matter where you get him from. I would just strongly recommend picking him up. Yes, he is a little smaller than a standard uh, deluxe class figure uh, in this day and age, but... In my eyes, he is completely 100% worth the asking price. Fans Project really hit it out of the park with this guy. I still think the Colossus uh, unit or uh, collection is their best work, but if this is the caliber of figure that we can expect from the uh, Causality line, man, I am excited for the other two figures. Uh, they should be released in August and September, so they should be in my grubby little hands soon. So, as I said, pick this up from TF Source. He is an excellent figure. I'm really glad I picked him up. He's a lot of fun, and he looks great. Just go, if you can get it, get it, because I don't think you'll be disappointed.